listening to With Stood, produced by Crossbrand. So someone has once said, no one is too far from the grace of Jesus. And I'm going to tell you today on this podcast, I have with me one of my oldest and dearest friends, Chris Holman. You don't want to miss this. You want to share it with everybody you know. Here we go. <laughs> All right, so let's clear the air here. Uh, he's already he's already started. So years ago, um, Chris Holman was attending with his family, Crossbrand. They started a church in Jacksonville, which is approximately two minutes from his house. And as much as it killed me, I, I said, uh, Chris, they need your help. They need your story. They need your family stories and experiences. And so somehow, some way, uh, I uh, got wind, and, and it was by Marvin Jones. And he'd always wait when there was a lull in the cow sale, and he'd stand up and he'd say, Pudger. I heard you kick Chris Holman out of the church up there. <laughs> uh, he didn't just do it at Tri County; he did it every opportunity he get. So, anyhow, well, welcome home, Chris. Yeah, I'm glad to be back. Welcome home, family. Tell me, tell me where you're at on grand. What's the grandchildren count now? Uh, we're up to about fourteen. Oh my good! No wonder you look tired this morning. Yeah, I'm giving out pretty much. Yeah, so we shipped a load of cattle this morning. And uh, he's twenty four pounds overweight. Yeah, and uh, so so he's he's grinning. He's so am I. So and oh, you're twenty four pounds overweight too. More than that. Are you on the uh, same diet as they are? Yes. All right. Two and a half pound a day. (laughs) (laughs) Oh my gosh! You betcha. That's the all right. Yeah. Um, Chris, it's so good to have you, brother. It is so good to see you, and thank you for doing this. Um, this is uh, we call this thing withstood, and the reason we do that is uh, all of the people that will come through this podcast room um, have their their survivors, and uh, man, you've got a heck of a story. Uh, let's go. Let's go back. Tell, tell me about your background. You you are from Jacksonville, right? Yep. Yep. Married a good old LaRue girl. Yep. And uh, Miss Patty, beautiful inside and out, and uh, she hasn't killed you. That's that's going to be the she and quit you and she hadn't killed you. She should have. Yes, sir. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go back. So, what was it like growing up with uh, Kent Holman? <laughs> um, my old dad was a wild man. Some days it was. Uh, really really good or some years it was really really good and some years it was really 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 bad uh i don't know i i I was talking to brett a while ago about uh growing up in 1972 he had a box of ml letty boot box in there and it said yeah yeah i said man i had a pair of ml letty back when i was like 10 years old and uh I was wearing bloody bloody boots in seventy two and in seventy four I was wearing the same boots and <laughs> I got a nail in my foot and the sole was paper thin. So that's that pretty much explains my whole life. I, we were really up or really down my you whole bet. life. You bet. You know. So your your daddy, um uh if you don't know Chris Holman, Chris Holman comes from a long line of cowmen. Um especially uh chris's daddy was an order buyer uh a, a big player and not just texas all over mm-hmm. all over wonder how many cattle would go through your dad's cut cards a year oh i don't know 20 or 30 loads a week and back then we shipped uh a lot of little two weights you know yeah so 20 or 30 loads a week so if you're from town and you're listening to this uh, or don't don't speak truck driver that's gonna be um i mean that could be up to uh what three thousand a week oh my lord i don't know i can't do the math that quick so, a lot of times we put 250 head on a triple deck trailer yeah 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 wow unheard of today nobody has triples anymore no yeah. no not at all and so you uh y'all y'all grew up you lost your daddy what year 2004 2004 and he had moved over to the big house yes sir. 
And uh, I believe Tony Bolton has got those pins now, right? Yes, That's Tony. my cousin. Tony yeah. is a good guy. Yeah. Good guy. Good as ever walked. His wife's a lot better than him, but. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's true. <laughs> There's a lot of people going to hear this, Chris, that, that know you, know your background. How old are you now? I'll be 60 in just about 45 days or so. All right. All right. So we're right there. We're about the same. December, I'm a Christmas Eve baby. What are you? Tenth. You're on the 10th. Um, Chris, take me back. Now, you um, <coughs> you were helping your daddy. Um, you grew up in, in the cell barn culture. Yeah. Right. And, um, so you, uh, you went through a, well, to say it was a rough patch would be the understatement of the day. When did you start driving a truck? Uh, I, I started running with them guys when I was 15. Okay. And, uh, I'd go to the panhandle and. Never went to California, but I, I'd go to the Panhandle in Kansas and stuff like that and run double with them guys when I was 15. Uh, there was one deal that we loaded right up here at Parrish, Texas, and that driver, it must have been up for days. And it's a, It was a cab over Mac with a 9-inch drop Hobbs trailer. Uh-oh. And I got in that truck. And I might have been 16, not sure. But anyways, I got in that truck at Parrish, Texas, and... Uh, I finally woke that driver up at Perryton, Texas, which is yes, right the top in the pan. Panel. You bet. Because <clears throat> I couldn't find the feed yard. Wow! But uh, he he was wore out, and he never got up the whole trip. You know. And you were sixteen when you first did that. Maybe yeah. I could have been fifteen. I'm not sure. Wow! Wow! So, Chris, we're going to talk about matters of faith, certainly on here, but. Um, you uh, you drove a truck from age fifteen or sixteen to how how long? Um, I finally quit driving in uh, uh, the end of eighty seven, nineteen eighty seven, and I started when I was eighteen. Yeah, and uh, legally, yeah, yeah, <laughs> getting yeah. Working for somebody, you know, I'm yeah. re- really working for somebody. I started when I was 18. Yeah. Yeah. So everybody, you know, anybody that knows Chris Holman knows your story, and we're going to talk about Narcotics Anonymous here in just a second. But uh, leading up to NA, those NA days, mm-hmm. um, what, what happened? When, when did uh, when did dope, well, when were you first introduced to dope? You know, my whole life I, I saw those truck drivers come in and out and – and I saw some of them in really, really a bad way. I never set out to be that person, you know, and uh, didn't want to be that person. And I knew what that could lead to, you know. Yeah. And I thought I was smart enough not to get in that shape, you know, or or go down that path. So when I started driving for somebody else when I was 18, I, I, uh, I uh, you know, I just – didn't want to go down that road, and I did good for a year or so, and and then I started taking a few diet pills, you know, to stay awake, and you know that wasn't nothing like what I'd seen them drivers do when I was growing up, and and uh, and then you know first one thing and another, and then I uh, got in a real bind one night, and uh, a, a friend of mine's truck was broke down and had a load of cattle on the side of the road, and I'd already been up a couple of days. And uh, I took meth for the first time. Yeah. And it was on mm. from then on. I really. That quick? Yeah. I was I was really hooked. That fast, I thought, man, I have. This is what I've been looking for in life, you know. Oh, wow! And uh, it was really that bad. Um, it, I, I, I had already been up for two or three days, and I finished that load, came right back, loaded another load, went right back to the panhandle, and I thought, man, I can do it like this. This is this is a good deal, and I don't feel nothing but good. And, but 
that lasted from I was probably nineteen, and that only lasted like four years, and mm. and I it hit the bottom. Uh, what what were your were your folks aware? Well, um, yeah, I'm sure they. Yeah, my mom knew for sure, but you know that was a. Uh, I had an excuse for what I was doing, you know, and and it was a way of life back then. I mean, back then, if you if a lot of times, uh, if a highway patrol caught people that had diet pills on them or something, they'd probably let them go, you know, because it yeah, was yeah, you know, pretty common back in those days or, or before then, you know. Yeah. And <clears throat> when uh, when drivers, especially bull haulers, uh start that stuff do you, is that a common story your story hey we're we're in a bind and uh it, it doesn't start out recreational a lot for a lot of those guys Selborne guys or does it well i don't i don't really understand your question but i i will tell you this um like cow haulers back then it, it was a brotherhood yeah yeah Yes, sir. It's good. It's okay, Chris. Yeah. We we did whatever it took to to take care of one another, and uh, and somewhere in there, <clears throat> it'd be might uh, Oh man, it, I mean, I I'd take a break. <laughs> but anyways, yes, sir. Um. Uh, no, I Somewhere just appreciate in there, your authenticity, Chris. It it became not a brotherhood, you know, and that happened as more when meth got in the program instead of diet pills, and uh, and and then what happened was is I saw people that were like brothers, you know, rat out their brother, you know, uh-huh. and it, 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 but. You know, when they say that that stuff will take you, I forget how the thing goes, but uh, further than you ever wanted to go, it does. Yeah. And uh, and really, after you get on it, you're the last one to know because I never set out to be that person. Yes, sir. Okay, well, but, let's talk about that journey, Chris. You, you were on that till 87, so you were how old, 20? I was I was twenty three when I got off of it. Yeah, twenty three when you got off of it, and that was in January eighty five. Eighty five. Okay, so there was a, there was a, um, there was an incident, and I've heard most of your story, but I think everybody else needs to know what what was the tipping point, the turning point. Um, I had a I I, I really cannot <clears throat> tell the the truth because I don't know what the truth is but I had it could have been several different things it, it could be that I was in a what they call a um, meth psychosis it could have been uh it could have been some something that I took that was laced with angel dust or something but but I had snapped and uh I was well I checked in the rehab on January the 8th of 1985, and I was six foot three and a half, and I weighed 125 pounds. Mm. And uh, they said that I had um, symptoms of a paranoid schizophrenic. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's how bad it was. And, uh, and so I really didn't know exactly what it was went wrong like inside my brain but uh and i don't know to this day and you were you were on it you were hauling cows when that breakdown happened weren't you yes but i i quit pretty pretty quick after that yeah because i knew something was something was wrong but uh yeah yeah but it you know did you go in willingly to the rehab (laughs) There was an old fella named Jack T, and my dad took me there. And they said, we'll just go down there, and if you don't like it, we'll come back home. Well, 
that was not the case. They, they oh, they told they fibbed you to you. You bet. Took me down there. That's an intervention. Keep, Love kicked me out. Yeah, but uh, yeah. Um, uh, you, you got me off track here, but uh, well, where did you go? I, where I was went, rehab? I went to Starlight Village Hospital at uh, Center Point, Texas. And, uh, you know, as, as what I was going to say is I was talking about that that whatever happened. Whatever happened, yes. The breakdown, psychosis. I like to say that that was the worst thing and the greatest thing that God ever loved me through. Oh, wow. I, I believe... <clears throat> that it took every bit of that to get me clean and to keep me clean. And I believe that that's his plan for me. Yes, sir. And I'm good with that. Chris, what, what, um, where was the Lord in all of this? You just told, you just, you just, we just peel back your soul just a little bit and you, you know, God, but was there, you know, when did you um, come to faith? When were you saved? When did you become a believer? Well, let me back up. And boy, you might have to edit part of this. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's okay. So uh, when I was 10 years old and uh, or along about that age, I had gotten baptized because my oldest cousin did and my brother did. And, uh, and I wanted to do that and I probably understood uh you know when I was about 15 years old I was you know went to church and you know I found a, a different church we'd moved away and I moved my letter and yeah yeah you know so I knew the Lord yeah uh then I did all that stuff that we talked about a while ago and I moved way away from him, mm. and and uh, I moved so far away from him that I remember just, I'll just put it mildly, I was very angry with God. Mm. And I remember telling God things like, uh, just put it on me, I, it can't get any worse. Oh, my goodness. And you know he did exactly what I asked him to do. Mm. Why? And why were you angry? You think it got worse because <laughs> I was so miserable, and uh, I was strung out. You know the the old timers in the in the fellowship they talk about this deal of uh, when the drugs or alcohol don't do any good anymore. That you just do it because you do it, and uh. they. They called it back in the old days, they called that stepping over the line. Yeah. And that meant you stepped over the line where it didn't have an effect anymore. You were just a numb effect. And that's what I was. Wow. And uh, and so I was really angry with God, you know. And I and I got I got clean and was able to stay clean and uh, got baptized again, yeah, you know, and you know, I I probably didn't need that second baptism, but uh, I wanted to do it, and uh, I don't know whether I needed it or not, but I do know this: that God. <laughs> Absolutely. He had me the whole time. Amen, brother. And what he, a story, Chris. He loved me. And I, I tell people today that uh, giving your kids, doing for your kids, giving them stuff, man, these kids are so spoiled today that it's unreal. <laughs> they got everything they ever wanted. But to take away from your kid or to punish your kid, that's the ultimate love. Yeah. I just told somebody the other day, you know, and it was a kid that 
that went to rehab. And I said, you know, it's easy to give your kid stuff, but it's hard to turn your back on your kid and tell him he's got to get better before. Yes, hard intervention. Before you can help him. Yeah, know? yeah. That's hard. Yeah. I, I call that uh, small love and big love. <laughs> That's right. So in so in eighty eighty five you um <clears throat> when when did you get involved with uh helping others? Uh, uh, as far as uh was it in NA? Didn't you start NA in Cherokee County? Well, I have to back up again. So Okay. I'm in that you know, my relationship with God is is long. Just like I've kinda explained. But when I'm I spent the first three weeks in that rehab, and I didn't want it. And I was trying to get a, find a way out, even to the point they had a, some horses out there. I called my wife, and I, I said, look, if you ain't coming to get me tonight, I'm riding one of them horses out of here. Oh, my gosh. In the morning. And uh, and here's God again. I woke up the next morning. I had a little, little bitty window in the bathroom, and I looked out that window. Seven inches of snow on the ground in South Texas. And I don't <laughs> like snow. But, uh, what a, but, oh, uh, my gosh. But anyways, you know, that's God. And so I'm in this for three weeks trying to leave that place. And I'm mad at everybody there. And especially mad at my counselor, bless her heart. And uh, so one day she sits down and reads me this lo- this big old thick book about drugs and the effects, the withdrawal effects, the uh, uh, everything about every drug that I had taken that I had told them I was taking. And uh, when she got done, she said, uh, she said, Chris, you've been here for three weeks, and you're not catching on. <laughs> and oh, no. And I don't know if I can help you, but if you're not exactly what I just read to you, I really don't think I can help you. Huh. And uh, and I don't know what this was, Mike. I do know it was God. I had a feeling came over me like I'd never felt in my entire life. And it was just a warmth. And wow. from that point, you know, I had a wife and two kids. I had bills forever. Um uh, you know, I had two babies, and at, and at that moment, I knew everything was going to be all right. Wow. Peace of God that passes all understanding. Yes, sir. That's exactly what it was. And uh, I knew it was going to be all right. And I knew that I might, I might be able to help somebody. And so I got out of there and I started going to AA. And uh, I, uh, in 1988, there was a lady came to Jacksonville and, and she wanted to open an NA meeting and I'd never been, but I, I, I had wanted to. And not that there's any difference, but I, I was or a drug addict and an alcoholic, but it's mm-hmm. all the same. Don't get me wrong. Yes, sir. Yeah, but, working uh, the program. Yeah. But um, so you know, uh, me and Patty, she opened, we opened the meeting there in Jacksonville for twenty years straight. You know, and uh, uh, you know, still trying to do the same old thing. You know. Yeah. It's been 37 years. 37 years ago, and how many meetings a week do we do in Jacksonville? Um, or how many How many meetings do you facilitate a week now? I don't facilitate any. I did them for 20 years, yeah. and uh, I still try to make a, a meeting or two a week, you know, hopefully. And, yeah, yeah. you know, I, I, all these – 12 step programs have been struggling for a long ever since COVID, you know. And oh my goodness, yes. It's, that's oh, that's got to be from Satan himself. Yes, sir. But, uh, yes, sir. It's it's really been hard on the yeah. on the programs and 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 the people in it. 
And Chris, you, um, of course, we're we're gonna wrap, we're gonna start to wrap up here, but I I will say this: um, you're not just uh, involved with uh, helping people in NA. You've been with the church in Jacksonville, uh, uh, branded for Christ. Is that right? No, Trail to Christ. Trail to Christ. Yeah. I get them all mixed up. You know them Cherokee County churches. Right. You can't There's hear a lot of them. <laughs> um, they, uh, you've been there how many years? Oh my lord! Since you kicked me out, man. since I kicked him out. Let's see, I started coming in here in oh four. Yeah, I think. Somewhere around fifteen years. I don't yeah, know. fifteen years, and y'all served there. You um, um, have served in a in a a variety of positions down there in the church, and you know sometimes you're an elder and rotate off, and you still are available to help in whatever ministries. But um, Chris, as we, you know, it's 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 interesting how God works. You know, um, my brother went the same thing you did at the same time under different circumstances and he actually uh we were in jacksonville for for a spell he actually went to one of your meetings oh my lord i didn't know. yeah and uh, of course um uh three or four rehabs later um finally you know the the dope got him yeah and it and it ended his life or at least some of the some of the people did he didn't. He didn't. Um, he he didn't make it. Now he he made it to heaven, because nobody is too messy for the grace of Jesus. We, we know that. Yes, sir. Um, Chris, what? Uh, kind of as a parting shot. What? What? You got your faith. You got your people. You got your beautiful family. For the folks that are struggling right now, or um, you know, maybe some of the families. What? What? <clears throat> what can you challenge us with? It's just exactly what you just said. And I forget how you said it. I can't say it that well, but um, you said that uh, nobody is too far gone for the grace of Jesus. That's right. Yes, sir. Um, I don't know any other way to put it, but uh, I've been a really, really, really bad person in my life. And I, you know, when I sponsor other people and stuff, and and I, I, I just tell them, you know, I, I would, I will, <clears throat> in that program we do a, a four-step, and that's the, all the good and bad you've ever done in your life. Mm. And everybody's afraid of it, and so was I. But every time I tell somebody that's trying to struggle through that, you know, I said. I tell them that I will match mine with yours and put wager on it. Yeah. And nobody on this earth is too bad for God. <laughs> You're right. And I'm I'm living proof of that. Yes, sir. And and I don't I regret all those things that I did and they are bad. But if you're out there and you're struggling and you think you're not good enough, you are. Amen. And uh, you can call me and I'll match mine with yours. There you go. Heck, I would tell it right now, but I'm afraid that you would be embarrassed by me. <laughs> <laughs> and I, I mean that, but uh, God can, well, let's put it, look at it this way. You know, um, uh, there's a a lot of people in the Bible that God thought a lot of, like old Paul, mm-hmm. and he was a Christian killer. Yes, sir. He was a murderer. People forget that. Yeah. And Peter cut that guy's ear off. Yes, he did. And I believe God can use people like that. You was talking about your brother that didn't make it. Yes, sir. You know, I believe that that alcoholics and drug addicts are maybe the finest people that walk the face of the earth. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> the reason is that 
they have these real high feelings and emotions like I've been showing you here a little bit. But uh, when we use drugs or alcohol, it lowers those feelings and emotions, and it takes them away. And we become really bad people. Mm. But if we can learn to live, to live with those high feelings and emotions, we're possibly the best people on earth. Absolutely, Chris. But uh, That's a good word. It's a good word. Uh, we just care more, love more, hate more. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We just got all these feelings and emotions that we have to deal with. And yes, sir. Learn how to deal with. And, yes, sir. Uh, heck, uh, we was at the sale barn yesterday, and they were doing a benefit for some for some disabled kids and stuff, and I run outside to call my boss to put it, <laughs> see if he'd put some money on it, and I couldn't hardly tell him what I was doing <laughs> because of my feelings and emotions, you know. But uh, you know, it was it was for a good deal. Yes, yeah, right. That's right, Chris. It, you you've uh, you've uh, bore your soul to the universe today. This has been a good past few minutes. I have wanted, and uh, we we have wanted to get you in this room and hear your story. And I, uh, it took some risk. Take some risk. I mean, you're fixing to walk out of here, and in thirty minutes, you're going to be sitting <clears throat> sitting with a buyer's card and a cell barn seat around some of our buddies who uh, need to hear this. Who need to hear this? The grown men, regular men. Um, we, you know, we're just messy people, Chris. Yeah. And, uh, I am so glad that God rescued you. Cause that's what that was. That's what that was. God bless you. Chris.